स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so we are going to end the discussion on the on the development of the theory in this case by giving few more tips uh, so let me just highlight a uh, few more tips so ways to improve ways to improve uh, the eulers or the numerical solution the numerical solution to the euler lagrange method well some of the natural tips would be to increase uh, or make the grid finer or to increase the number of grid points or so well so that is the standard suggestion but some of the uh, non standard suggestions are to use better quadrature rules here we have just used rectangle rule to change the integral into summation so we could use better numerical quadrature quadrature some of the quadratures available are trapezoidal we could use trapezoidal quadrature or we could use simpson's rule right or we could use uh, even higher order quadrature like the romberg rule right or we could use we could use adaptive grids right so far the example i have shown is for a uniform grid we could also use adaptive grids grids will become finer where the function changes rapidly right and non uniform or adaptive grids okay so more details can be found uh, in this textbook so students are uh, asked to refer to this textbook for more details on the numerical solutions of euler lagrange via the uh, for eulers and other higher order methods uh, this book is has the title calculus of variations with applications with applications in physics and engineering by robert weinstock by robert weinstock okay so what we have is the following so we see that uh, let us look at another method or the numerical solution uh, the method that i intend to highlight is the ritz method okay the ritz method now what exactly is this method this method tells us that we could rather than approximating by taking uh, by taking the values of the function at finite number of grid points we could use a uh, set of basis function to uh, to approximate our uh, our uh, extremum function so we could use a set of orthogonal basis function and expand our functional in terms of the the basis function right so the idea is as follows we are going to approximate we are going to approximate our variable we are going to approximate our variable uh, using using family of linearly linearly independent functions we are going to approximate our variable using family of linearly independent functions right and let us say our family is as follows phi i i from 0 to n right where our function is y n of x so i am going to approximate y so y the the unknown of the problem is going to be approximated by yn which is a linear combination of phi i's so c1 phi1 of x 
this is also a function of x and so on plus c n phi n of x right. Okay, so, we see that. So, then again this sort of an approximation for again reduces the problem from the functional optimization to the problem of function optimization, where the unknowns now are these constants c 1 to c n right. So, so what I said is, uh, so well let me call this this as point number 1. So, point number 2 is we reduce we reduce the problem we reduce the problem into standard multivariate standard multivariate minimization problem standard multivariate minimization problem uh, for for unknowns unknowns c i s right. So, what we do is so the unknowns now after doing after applying the approximation in the previous slide will be c i s and all we do is differentiate our functional our function that is we differentiate our function with respect to the c i s and set it equal to 0 right, where where my function is now an approximate function of y n. So, y has been approximated by y n right. So, so which means this particular quantity to begin with was an integral. So, this was a functional of this integral of this following quantity and this is now a function of the variable c 1 to c n. Okay. So, then uh, well let me just write down all the points and I am going to highlight this method with an example. So, further we we choose in our choice of phi phi i is notice that I have started with phi 0 and I have started well with a coefficient 1 and I have phi 1 to phi n. So, we choose phi 0 we choose phi 0 of x such that the boundary conditions are satisfied right. We choose phi 0 of x such that the boundary condition is satisfied uh, and, and further we choose phi j's of x such that with with homogeneous boundary condition homogeneous boundary conditions which means that we choose our phi j such that phi j of x naught is phi j of x 1 is equal to 0 where j is from 1 to n the rest of the phi j s right. And then uh, note that phi j s could be let me call this as 4. So, phi j s could be could be from the standard set of orthogonal functions could be from the standard set of orthogonal functions like like power series or polynomials or it could be the trick function the trick functions like sin and cos it could also be the bessel function right and so on so forth okay so then so we assume uh, we assume so a little bit of uh, analysis uh, before we look at some examples we let us say that y is the extremal to the problem extremal to the problem at at hand we assume that without loss of generality the extremal we are talking is minimum right so in that case we must we, we have that the value of the functional f of y will be less than f of y hat where y hat is the perturbation of y right where 
y hat is within let us say within epsilon neighborhood of y right close enough to y. So, then uh, well so what I want to show here is that the 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 value of the functional uh, which which is the value of the function that we get from the Ritz method will be if it is very close to the original extremal found from the Euler Lagrange then the value of the function from the Ritz method will give an upper bound to the value of the functional or the exact value of the functional right. So, so what I just said is the following. So, what I have is so f of y f of y so we assume we assume that our approximate assume that our approximate solution our approximate function y n is inside is inside the epsilon neighborhood neighborhood of y. So, which means the, the approximation from the Ritz method is sufficiently close enough to the exact extremal right. So, in that case what we have is f of y is less than equal to f of y n which is the value obtained by evaluating the values of these c i s right. So, well let me call this as f n because we are approximating up to n terms. So, as I just said the the approximation the approximation gives an upper bound gives an upper bound as we can see from here ok. So, if we were to so, we care must be taken for a careful choice of phi i's and not only that the higher the value of the phi i's we expect that the closer is the approximate solution to the exact solution right. So, so let us let us look at an example. The example says find the extremal find the extremal of f of y well we look at the same functional y prime square by 2 plus y square by 2 minus y right dx with y 0 is equal to y 1 is equal to 0. Okay. So, I know that my Euler Lagrange method my E L equation reduced to the following O D for this problem and uh, well let us go back to few slides to check what was the solution. We get the following O D right. So, we get the following O D E and now if we were so, we are in a position that whatever solution that we get via the Ritz method we can check it with the solution of the Euler Lagrange to see how close is, is it to the exact solution. Okay. So, if we were to use the Ritz method so let us say this is the solution the Ritz method shows that this is y n of x is phi 0 of x plus summation c i phi i of x where i is from 1 to 1 to n. So, we we take we are going to take phi 0 of x to be identically 0 because by taking this value it the the y n's immediately are going to satisfy the boundary condition and we take phi i's uh, phi i's i from 1 to n as this following polynomial functions 
So, this is what we choose in our as our basis function. It can be shown that these are linearly independent basis functions. Okay. So, all we need are linearly independent basis functions. So, then uh, let us look at a simple approximation. So, we are going to approximate y with y 1 which is also equal to c 1 times phi 1. So, there is just one unknown to be found which is c 1 which is also equal to c 1 times c 1 times x times 1 minus x by plugging in i equal to 1. So, then in that case f 1 of c 1 is nothing but f of y 1 and this is also equal to the integral from 0 to 1. I am just plugging in instead of y, I am plugging in y 1. We see that this is also equal to c 1 square 1 minus 2 x. right? So, phi 1 is this quantity and I can immediately from here get that phi 1 derivative of phi 1 is 1 minus 2 x, right? where phi 1 is x times 1 minus x. So, I get the following expression now. So, c 1 square by 2 1 minus 2 x whole square plus c 1 square by 2 x square 1 minus x whole square minus c 1 x 1 minus x d x. Okay. So, then what we get is that this is also equal to <laughs> after opening up all the squares, we are going to get that this is c 1 square by 2 times the integral 0 to 1, 1 minus 4 x plus 5 x square minus x to the power 4 t x plus c 1 integral 0 to 1 minus x plus x square d x. Right? So, then once we perform all the necessary integration, I am going to get the following result that f of well f 1 of c 1 comes out to be after doing all the necessary integration c 1 square by 2 times 11 over 30 minus c 1 by 6. So, we solve we solve for c 1 we solve for c 1 to see that by taking the derivative of f 1 with respect to c 1 and setting equal to 0 standard multivariate minimization argument or optimization argument. We see that this is also equal to 11 c 1 by 30 minus 1 by 6 is equal to 0 or I get that c 1 is equal to 5 by 11. Right? Okay. So, then from here I get that my solution y 1 is c 1 times phi 1 which is this right? and this is my approximate extremal that we have obtained using the Ritz method. Uh, we can check we can check that the value of the functional evaluated at y 1 is coming out to be this following constant which is minus this quantity right uh, and by the analysis that i have just shown few slides back this is the upper bound this is the upper bound uh, of the solution to the euler lagrange the solution to the euler lagrange equation right which was highlighted few slides back okay okay so so j before we move on i just want to highlight how does this approximate solution compares with the exact solution so if we were to plot y versus x the exact solution is as follows so this is the y exact or this is also equal to the y obtained from the euler lagrange method and the solution that we obtained above right which is my y 1 which is this particular solution is quite close 
to the exact solution. So, even with this approximation with one basis function gives us close enough uh, approximation to the exact uh, solution. Okay. So, alternatively well the choice of phi is ours, the choice of the basis function is ours and sometimes the choice is good while some other times the choice is poor. right? So, so let us look at another choice of the same function. So, alternatively suppose we were to choose the following basis function. Suppose we were to choose phi 1 equal to sin pi x. right? So, notice that phi 1 at 0 is phi 1 at 1 is also 0. Right? So, a similar a similar exercise a similar exercise of finding the approximate solution leads us to y 1 equal to the c 1 phi 1 comes out to be 4 by pi times pi square plus 1 times sin pi x. Okay? So, use the Ritz method and we will see that the solution comes out to be the following. And if we were to now plot the exact solution, the exact solution with respect to let us say the approximate solution. So, let us say this is my exact solution. The approximate solution in this case is, is poorer. Okay? So, so, which means which means in this case we have a poor poor choice of phi 1 right so this phi 1 is not a good choice so so the moral of the exercise that we have done so far is that is that the choice of the choice of the basis function phi i's phi i's matter right so i'm not going to go into more detail as to what sort of phi i's will be suitable for what sort of functional but I am going to definitely give a reference which uh, talks in depth about the choice of this Ritz basis function. So, first of all the choice of i i's matter and also uh, and also the approximation becomes better using larger families of phi i's. That is this advice is irrespective of the method whether we use Euler, whether we use Ritz method or another method that we are going to describe shortly. So, use larger and larger family to get better approximation. Okay. So, let us look at an example. So, I am going to highlight an example. So, I am going to solve the same catenary problem via the Ritz method, catenary via the Ritz method. Okay. So, my functional which is the potential energy functional in the catenary problem is as follows 0 to well x 0 to x 1 y times square root of 1 plus y prime square d x. Right? And I see that this is with the boundary condition y of minus 1. So, I choose my x 0 to be minus 1 and x 1 to be 1. So, y of minus 1 is equal to y of 1. Let us say this is also equal to some y 0. right? So, what we have done? We are solving a symmetric problem, where the height of the extremal is the same at both the boundary points. Okay, so, so, we all know over the discourse of the last few lectures that the solution to the catenary problem via the Euler Lagrange equation is in the following form y of x is equal to c 1 cos hyperbolic x by c 1. Right? And y 1, let us say that, uh, let us assume, let us assume further that our y 0 is 2. So, y 1 and y minus 1 is equal to 2. Right? We, we are assuming some value, some numerical value. So, that gives, uh, so that gives my, that gives my two values of c 1. 
So, so we already know the solution when we impose the boundary condition y minus 1 equal to y 1 equal to 2, we get two values of c 1, c 1 is either 0.47 or c 1 is also 1.697. So, we get two values of c 1, right. We have already discussed that uh, if your y is above a certain critical value, I am going to get uh, two, uh, two solutions, right, not necessarily both of them minima. Okay. So, in that case, uh, well, well, we can immediately see which one is minima or which one is maxima. So, at the value c 1 is equal to 0 0.47, uh, 0 0.47 I see that f, f 1 at c 1, well, the value of the functional f of y comes out to be this quantity 4.36. So, it we can just plug in c 1 and uh, plug the the extremal y here into the functional of our potential energy function. And we see that, so let me let me use the same notation w g of y, it comes out to be this value and at c 1 equal to the other value, I see that my potel, potential energy functional comes out to be the following quantity. So, this one, this one is the minima and this one is the case of maxima, right. Okay. So, let us see what happens when we find the solution via the Ritz method. Okay. So, so we see we are going to, we are going to in our Ritz method, we are going to approximate, we are going to approximate via polynomial functions this time, polynomial function. Okay. So, I am going to say that my y of x is approximately equal to is equal to is approximately equal to y n of x and y n is a 0 plus a 1 of x right and so on plus a 2 of x square and so on right. Okay. Now, before we move ahead, we also know that the problem is symmetric. We, we stated that to begin with, which means that the solution that we are assuming must also be an even function to account for the symmetry, right. So, which means due to, due to symmetry of the boundary condition, y of x is even right due to symmetry of the boundary condition y of x is an even function. So, which means which means that my odd coefficients a 1 is equal to a 3 and so on they are all 0 right. Okay. So, let us uh, so, so let us now approximate y of x y of x by y 2 of x which is nothing but a 0 plus a 1 x square or a 2 x square, a 1 is already 0, right. So, let us use uh, the least order approximation and see how does the Ritz method compares, right. So, further, uh, further we know that, we know that uh, y 1, uh, y at 1 is also equal to y 0, we have taken y 0 equal to 2 which we will use later on. So, this is also equal to 2, in fact, let me plug the value here. So, this, this means that y of x now is, I can eliminate with this boundary condition, I can eliminate one of the constants a 2. So, this becomes a 0 plus plus 2 minus a 0 times times x square, right. Okay. So, then, so then what I have is the following. Uh, so, I have y of x. So, similarly I can find y prime of x, my y prime of x comes out to be, we differentiate this 2 times 2 minus a naught x, right. So, then I substitute all these into my functional of w p of y, the functional that I had and find out the expression. So, substitute let me call this, this entire expression, the set of these two expression as 1. 
So, we substitute we substitute 1 we substitute 1 into our functional w p of y and and integrate we can very clearly integrate with respect to the variable x right the variable x can be integrated out and we are going to be uh, left out with a function of one variable a naught right it is easier easier said than done because we will see that this function is very very complicated right so integrate to get w of a naught w p at a naught right we see that well let me just show you that the function that is generated here by showing you some of the terms so these these terms are generated from from the software maple so maple gives when we feed feed all these approximations into the functional in the software maple we see that my expression wp of a naught is the following so let me write few terms in fact i am never going to complete writing all the terms so let me just show what is the complexity that we have so this is the quantity and then plus minus 4 log natural log of 2 minus 1 minus uh, minus uh, natural log of of 4 minus 4 a naught uh, plus a naught square ok and that completes this bracket and minus uh, minus square root pi times dot 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 so let me let me not even write write all these terms just tell that there are about 428 terms so notice that the complexity that we have so what i'm trying to show here is finding the the optimum solution of wp or finding the optimal value of a naught by hand is almost impossible right so we cannot just take the first derivative and set it equal to 0 and find the solution analytically however if we feed this entire expression in the software itself and draw the figure wp of a naught versus a naught we can see where is the maximum or the minimum so when we do that uh, so 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 we plot plot numerically plot numerically we see so le let me show the plot in the next page we plot numerically and highlight that w of w p of a naught versus a naught we see that we get the following function you get the following curve where we obtain this maxima at a naught equal to 0.41 and the minima is obtained at a naught equal to 1.69 okay so this is my a naught axis so we can see that we can see that the local the local min is at a naught equal to 1.69 and the local compare compare the local min for c1 which was at 1.697 for the exact function to the or the exact solution to the euler lagrange equation right and the local max that we get here is a naught equal to at 0.41 and again compare compare it with the local max at c1 equal to 0.47 so it seems that it seems that in this case my minimum and the maximum are quite accurately captured by the ritz method uh, of the original extremal right so this question is so this question that we have to ask when is this case always true or what i am asking is the following what i am asking is is the nature is the nature of the approximate is the nature of the approximate extrema the approximate extrema identically equal to the exact extrema right so we saw the the exact solution the solution to the euler lagrange and the solution obtained by the ritz method and we saw that 
that the uh, the maxima and the minima they are they are almost identically equal so this question is is the nature is the nature of the approximate extrema equal to the exact extrema always is this always true is this always true so the answer to this is it depends on how good is the approximation right so so the answer to this is if i have that the approximation if the approximation is near when i say near the near is in terms of a certain norm so near to the actual extrema the actual extrema right if the approximate and and further there is no other extrema there is no other extrema nearby right so we do not have multiple solutions to the euler lagrange equation uh, otherwise the approximation uh, to the via the ritz method might give erroneous answers and finally the functional that we are optimizing is smooth so that the derivatives exists then the answer is yes so then yes that is the type the type of approximate approximate extrema extrema is identically equal to the exact extrema okay okay so so that completes that completes this particular example completes the discussion of the ritz method the students are asked i am going to provide a reference towards the end and the students are asked to solve more examples why the reference as well as our uh, homework modules and the tutorials